Good morning, hello, and happy Thursday. How are you all doing today? Esetsu, hello. So I um I was hoping that uh, Zilby was going to come down and join us this morning, but he asked for food right before I started, so he's probably upstairs eating and having fun there. Uh, Anshul, hello. Uh, no, no demon, hello. How are you all doing today? Uh, Esetsu, thanks for uh, stepping in and answering that question in Discord too. Um, sounds like sounds like you were able to get everything sort of figured out pretty quickly. I've been um thinking about what the what the assessments for these should look like, and I'm not I'm not completely sure. Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of mutable state anyways. Uh, is there is there any documentation on best practices for that? I feel I feel that there isn't that I can like point to. I have to use just my own experience. You figured everyone else would be asleep and it's never fun waiting hours for support. Yeah, that's true. I I'm I'm happy that we now have people far spread far enough across the world that there's 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 usually somebody online, which I think is great. I wish that there was like a point system that we could do that's uh similar to channel points. Um then then we can like Give out those for answering, ask, answering and asking questions. Just something I've always wanted to do. There's that um, we sort of toyed with it a little bit a long time ago. So maybe maybe I'll come back and we'll play around with that again sometime someday. I can have multiple states too, it sounds like almost. I don't ever know why I would want that though. Because it's not like it's not like the states don't disappear. Like you put the state in and it's there in memory for well, forever really. And I guess you're constantly cloning it, so if it's things like strings then yeah, you're cloning those. But also strings, like if it's just a normal string, like a token or something else, it's not taking up very much memory.
Yeah, so like decently down far. So what this is like almost one third of the way down. It's like, hey, you could do a shared mutable state using arg mutex. then that's it. So it's the very end of here. The The problem with shared state in a multi-threaded environment like this is, I mean, you can't trust that this is what you think it is. So I have, I have trouble thinking about like any, any real scenario that I want, that I want actually immutable state like this, that I wouldn't use a database for. Even even something like Redis would be better, right? Yeah, exactly. No demon, you've deadlocked yourself way too many times. Like this, this feels like it's just deadlock waiting to happen. But when I was on. Worms, like this is the num this is like one of the one of the top things I see people ask is how to do. And it's like if I'm building a course, is it is it right for me to say just don't do that? <laughs> no. You can't do that. You think the typical example is an ephemeral chat room? That feels like such a contrived example. Because when when are we going to have that in a real app? Where everybody in the server wants to be able to see everything or you want to mute everything, you want to mutate everything like that. But again, it comes down to like, okay, you want an ephemeral chat room. You can still do that with an ephemeral database. It, it doesn't have to be an in-memory database. It could be a, an ephemeral database like, you know, Redis. We can set up Redis to be ephemeral. Just sits there in memory and doesn't, doesn't ever write to disk. with the nice side effect that I can now still scale up Axum and we're, we're good to go. Because if, if we have shared state like this and I scale up Axum horizontally, none of the other Axums are going to have access to that mutable state. And so therefore, you now have to go to that original one. I, I don't know. I, I just go back and forth. No, not even go back and forth. I just go back to, I don't get it. I'll see how you distributed to that. Now it's just race condition hell. I mean, it's not even, I don't even know if you get to the race condition, right? Because let's say we have two servers. Now each have mutable state. You hit one server and you get one mutable state. You get another server and it's like completely different mutable state. And the front end gets completely different data now and it's just like well i don't know what's going on there's no way that you want to write code to have the the, the apps talk to each other that just seems that's just solving a problem that we caused there's you shouldn't sync that like that's not a thing it's it's like it's like saying hey We've, we've spent hundreds of hours solving a problem that we caused by just not using a database. Why? Why did we, why did we, yeah. So what I was saying is that PHP was the best language server all along. Who knew? I know, right? Like stick with PHP 4, no, no frameworks. 
uh, back end rendered and everything just sort of jumbled as a giant plate of spaghetti. It turns out that that was the best. I feel that I need to teach this. I also feel that I need to teach why you shouldn't do this. Can I teach some uh, CRM or diesel? Yeah, actually, here, take a look at the, uh, the plan for this. Um, I don't know. You have, I don't know if you've actually seen this um, or if it. Uh, but here's my plan for the course. The teal ones, this is like these light green blue ones. These are going to be lessons without assessments. Thank you, Asitsu. You have not seen any of this. Actually, wait. I thought I thought for a se for a second that that was a double negative, but it's not. Okay, never mind. Now my brain is just playing tricks on me because it's early. So here, let me let me let me let me introduce you all to to what what I'm actually doing. And also, sorry about the brightness of this. I, there's no there's no dark mode for any of the whiteboard applications that I've ever been using, which kind of sucks. It's sad. You guess technically there isn't much difference between manually using Arc plus Mutex and something like a database pool that uses interior mutability. Um, correct, there isn't. And in fact, I would bet that they are using Arc plus Mutex. But, I mean, at the same time, with with that one, they have it, it's handled it's handled properly. If it's it's, I'm using that connection pool to be able to get access to a database that, that basically makes it that I no longer need any kind of mutable state because I have that thing. And then I can use multiple databases, right? Like this is a common pattern in web, web development is I can have Redis. I can have some kind of in-memory database that's super fast. It can be used as a cache uh, and that sits there next to the server and I can have a bigger database like Postgres or MySQL or, you know, something. And that sits, you know, maybe a little bit farther away, but, you know, also there and I can have two database connections to it. And that's really common. What I probably don't want is to just create my own in-memory database inside of Axum. Because I don't, I don't see a realistic, like, that would not pass any kind of code review in a professional setting. Not that I know of. All right. Anyways, slight, slight tangent over. Also, it's, it's a whiteboard, not a blackboard. That, that, true, true. All right. So we are working on an Axum course. Uh, so it's, um, I have an introduction to Axum course on YouTube. Uh, I want to take what I have there, add maybe a little bit more to it, make it a little bit better. Uh, and then this is going to go on our LMS that we built. Uh, so the, uh, the big sort of change that I'm doing this time to it is I'm, I'm creating actual assessments. So instead of, okay, just go through, follow along, and then work on a project, which you can also follow along too, uh, it's really going to be, hey, here's these micro assessments. They're repos that you can clone, download, and go through, and they will, they'll just, uh, they'll, they'll spot check very specific skills. Uh, so these ones are gonna be my like basic uh, lessons. Um, they're gonna be like no assessments built inside of them. 
Um, and these sort of purple ones are going to be, they, they actually have assessments. And so the assessment, this is the assessment. I named it like workspace. You go into it, you download it, and it's like either in a okay state and you need to add something to it, or it's in a broken state, you need to fix it, or usually somewhere in the middle where it's like, okay, fix it and add something to it. So for the routing lessons, I'm... We could probably do like a simple state for that. For a mutable state, I mean, this almost feels like uh, just, I'm just going back and forth on this. Like, do I how how do I want to teach Arc and Mutex, um, and do I want to teach it for this pattern? Because if you're new to it and I teach this, it's going to become like the the tool you pull out for all things when it's maybe not the best tool to use. It's certainly powerful though. Um, cool. I have no idea how I just suddenly scrolled up into the middle of nowhere. Um, okay. So like we have things for headers, we're going to have middleware stuff. I'm going to have some stuff for Docker so you can run a Postgres database inside of there. Uh, we also want to run Axum server in Docker. Uh, to your question, uh, no demon. Yes, I'm going to have an entire section for CRM. I've used diesel in the past. So I've used both diesel and CRM in a project. And diesel has a harder startup. So I'm going to start with CRM. I'm probably going to do another lesson for like a micro course for diesel. Uh, and then maybe in the future we can, when we do the Axum again, we can say you get your choice, you know, diesel or CRM. Um, and I've, I've decided I'm going to try shuttle. We're gonna we're gonna set up for a shuttle for deployment. Um, I haven't used it myself, but I I want to. I have a I have a side project I'm thinking about, just like building really quickly, playing around with it, doing all these things to make sure that it's uh it's it's what I want. But everybody in the community seems to like shuttle so far, so I'm I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm also planning on using auth, like teaching auth, and then I'm probably going to use I'm well probably I'm gonna I'm gonna basically teach auth zero for it. It's like hey, you can you can do auth you can do auth with auth zero, and then instead of me creating a project, uh, this is going to be actually the student that creates the project. So, and then uh, presents to each other uh, with that. So, uh, it's going to be a longer course, and then. The, the other thing is with all of these along the side, the vertical, I can take these and chop them up into little micro courses and make them available separately. Since that was actually one of a, a complaint that I saw about the other courses. It's like, oh, the YouTube videos are like, you know, there's so many hours, there's so many videos in it. That's, you know, that's too long. I, I want my, I want to just learn this one thing. It's like, okay, okay. Previously, you could have just, jumped into it but all right here you could just you want you want to know how to set up axum and docker here you go here go go buy that course and just only that course and it'll be fine so i'm i'm hoping that i can get like uh, a mix of like the live you get everything and then also hey here's a here's exactly what you want it's a little spot course so that is the plan Perhaps 
I could send them off to go to the book for for Arc and Mutex, and I can just handle that and create that as like a little micro course later, and just say, hey. So may maybe what I'm gonna do, come out here and we'll just say, um, mutable state arc mutex. I guess it's something like that. And I won't even have that at all. And then we'll just do simple state. And so simple state would be something like a database. Um, practicing building the simple state. So I think that's like a configuration object is perfect for a state. And then... So configuration object and then uh, the database, like a database shared pool, which is clonable by default. So you don't need, that's another thing that I have noticed. I have noticed some people saying like, hey, I need Arc and Mutex. And it's like, why? And it's like, well, I need it for my database connection. And it's like, are, are you sure that you need to do that? So I should definitely include that in here so the order that these are going to be taught in the course are gonna be different right so like i can get through a bunch of these early on but then this probably shouldn't come until after we do some of crm like probably these two CRM and then come back. Excuse me. I got the, you got the mutant time though. Uh, yeah. So we'll get CRM and, uh, okay. So we'll do CRM like connections, seeds and migrations, and then we'll have to do come back and do state so we can pass that into there and then back to here to continue on. It'll be, it'll be fun. This feels like it's a 3D map in 2D space. So we can come back to this. Rod handler can extract headers. Oh, that seems okay. Headers and custom headers. Uh, stacking, hello. How are you doing today? Really, I could just do this as a single assessment across all of these. So, headers. You accidentally overslept yesterday? That does, it It feels really good until suddenly it doesn't. Have, have you ever like slept too much? It's always what I'm concerned about when oversleeping. Good thing Wednesday is your just be around to help others day, so it wasn't a big deal. It, yeah, I I like those days. Those days are fun. Oversleep headaches are the worst than a hangover. I've, it's been a long time since I've had a hangover because I don't really drink that much anymore.
but I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt. I wouldn't doubt. It's been it's been too long since for me to remember anymore. Um you feel every time we study web server and dev, they include some static file server with a template engine. Oh, that's probably a good idea. I was thinking about just API only, but they're gonna want that. Um do I have I thought I had a static somewhere in here. Yeah, so here in, in middleware, I have serving static files. But what I probably want is to build a new section of these. And we'll do um, like web, web server. I'll remove you. Why am I using that mouse? Well, okay. I'm using that mouse because that's the only mouse I can use to move that around. Okay, so we have serving static files. Um, we will have HTML template template system. I've used the OG handlebars. Stacking, you might remember that. Remember when we made the original uh starting soon screen? That was we used uh we used Act Actix Web and Handlebars for that. Yeah, that was like it, it was like I was I was like, okay, we're we're in for a big, big rough time. We're gonna go find, we're gonna go figure out how we're gonna do this. Hopefully we don't have to create like our own template stuff. And then like five minutes later, we're like, okay, we got it. <laughs> it's done. Oh, we did make greeting cards too. Yes, we did. Um, uh, serving static files, HTML templates, and I think I think that's gonna be it for this. Yeah, we made I made greeting cards for Christmas, uh, and I may have made a greeting card for New Year's too. Uh, nothing, I haven't needed any kind of greeting cards since then. So I might, we might do that again sometime and then create wit with you. There's Terra. Um, okay. So let's. Your go-to is usually Terra or Askama or your own. You, you just write your own. That always feels like it's a lot from when I begin, but like if you really think about it, if you don't need that many features in it, it's probably not that bad. Let's take a look at Terra. Okay, so it uses that style. Has loops built in. Okay, nice. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it is just a basic insert engine. Like I've built, I built a few of these. I just never think of it as like a template engine type thing, but I have built a few of these for like scripting purposes. I built one for um, t uh, uh, fuzz testing a a JSON configuration file as well. That was fun. Okay, so this this doesn't look too bad. Updated relatively recently. There's Terra. Uh, what was the other one? It's Askama. Uh, wait, did they not put an example? Oh, okay, here it is. This one is more like handlebars then. OK, 
Okay, and then there is just the good old handlebars. So it looks like this is maybe slightly closer to As Askema. Is this um is this full featured from handlebars? Okay. I just realized that's a lot of vocals. Sorry about that. All right, we will do, I will not make the decision right now. So uh, we will say, what was it? It was Terra or Askema or Handlebars. And then of course, in the future, if I have time, I can just do all three. And then you could choose whichever one you want to do. Because in the end, as you were saying, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have something that works. Usually use those if you want to do something simple, but you don't like the whole idea of template engines just being just text replacement. Your own builds a full AST. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. So that's like the big, the big thing with... Um, handlebars was that it was trying to separate out everything and just be text replacement as much as possible but it still ended up with with some logic in there because they just couldn't get away from that and i can i, I can see where they're going where they're coming from we we don't want too much logic in the rendering part especially if they're separate files All right, we'll, we'll come back to that in a little bit. We're going to do headers first. So today is headers, um, headers day. All right, headers. Um, Introduction to the assessment. Okay, so uh, basically uh, catching, like receiving. So receiving uh, headers in, uh, in requests and setting headers when responding. I don't want to say like to the request itself because obviously it's part of the request uh, and it's not to the body. It's like to the body. And or um, URL. They're more general, so it can work on not just HTML, but you like being able to manipulate the HTML on the server side instead of having to do regex replacement to make changes to non-templated code. Uh, oh yeah, if you're ended up having to do regex, then that sucks. Then yeah, then you definitely want some kind of templating system. It just to me, I haven't I haven't run into a project myself where I want to have like a custom 
a template replacement. But I mean, obviously that doesn't mean that that they don't exist. It's just more of those are the type projects that I'm generally working on. That being said, I'm pretty sure I'm going to run into that pretty quickly with the LMS and I'm going to have to build my own markdown uh, language slash compiler uh, interpreter. So that's that's I, I'm probably going to build we're going to build one of those eventually, probably after we go through the Axum course. Uh, we sort of see things, how they're going, do some updates. Um, that will be a relatively quick follow on. All right, so I feel like I have to mention this because this is this is something that that is confusing to some people. Is hey, you know, I I want to like send the token or the key. I guess we're gonna have to throw this into you know into the body and have it be a post request. And it's like, well, it doesn't have to be there. If you're using the HTTPS, the headers are encrypted, so you're fine there. All right. Skills, um, uh, I guess like a uh, retrieving, uh, retrieving standard headers. As a simple example, you can create a template that includes a style sheet or a script in a component and then traverse the structure and pull that out to the header or footer. Oh, that's nice. That actually feels a lot like what Trunk is doing. I, I believe, right? Trunk, Trunk will move things around. I mean, but yeah, that, that, seems, that seems pretty important. Don't think I need anything else with this one, really. Okay, so we do that. Open it. Okay, and then we'll need to update these. All the medium blog posts overhype headers versus local storage. If either one are exploited, you have bigger things to worry about. I I feel that local storage is is it easier to uh, probably isn't. I'm trying to remember the uh, the permissions requested in in an extension. So it's like okay, I want I want permissions for, and then it's like all network activity is for headers, and then uh, like data storage is for local storage. But usually, what happens is if it's a if it's a if it's a bad, evil, extension, it's just gonna ask for all data, and everybody's just gonna click on the okay, and give them everything anyway. So it doesn't matter. As you said, you have bigger things to worry about at that point in time. You know, it, I would almost, okay, so 
your 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 statement about local storage i would almost rather use local storage than an arc mutex in a state is that just is that just me being being like bullheaded about arc like manually doing arc mutexes at that point just to say like hey just throw it in there and just like send it back down from the front end every time cores will stop other scripts from cross domains so don't allow all on a real server oh yeah oh i have cores right i better have cores How how could I have how could have I forgotten cores? Okay, well now I know what I'm putting in here. I mean, just can I not find it? Yeah, literally. Okay, never mind. I don't. That's a good catch. We we absolutely need a lesson on cores. That's like that's one of the hardest things to learn if you're just beginning web dev. It doesn't even matter if you have like 20 years of experience everywhere else in development. If you're new to web dev, cores is going to kick your butt. Keep it simple or complexity demon will hunt you down later. Complexity demon will hunt you down now. And then also later, like it'll it'll stick with you forever. Um, yeah, cor cores is cores is actually pretty good. It does it does what it's supposed to do pretty well. I think a lot of people forget that cores is really a front end protection thing. So it's protecting you. It's protecting your users in your browser. It's not protecting your server for anything at all, really. I mean, I guess it kind of helps with with like appropriate use, but yeah. Complexity is the most expensive debt a company will ever have. Yes. I was also like in my mind, I was trying to like, I was saying like, are we, is it, is it right? Is complexity right? Or would it be comp complicated to be right? But no, I think it's right. I think, com I think com comp complex is right here in this case. Um, Cause complexity comes with, comes with darkness because it's unknown. There's unknowns inside of it. If it's complicated, it's like, there's a lot to it, but everybody know you know what's going on there. It's it's not impossible to figure out and know it. Complexity can hide defects and can also cause fear when updating unless you have a full testing framework which a full testing framework of like full tests is how you turn a complex thing into a complicated thing. That's my, that's my, that's my project manager, project management, my management hat showing how to do risk management there. Um, all right. What do we, what do we want to do? Maybe we'll come back to the rubric and add in the tasks later. Uh, I guess for right now we will let's go start setting things up so we're gonna do cargo add we want axum with headers definitely testing is just a prayer at that point 
my favorite my favorite quote about testing which i don't remember where it comes from uh is we're always testing in production it's our choice whether we test before production but we also always test production too the question is for all these complex apps that we're building do we want to do more than one level like one layer of tests I would argue that yeah. And it's um it's it's so ironic because if we have lots of testing, you know, th think of that as like shining lights on the code. It will just by default cause complexity to go down just having those tests. And it can make it feel like you don't need the tests because everything just works now when you have all the tests. And that's that's where it gets really dangerous because you could start thinking, well, I don't need tests. Everything just works the way, you know in this this repo. So let's just not have tests and bam, you just added complexity. You just broke a window. And now now everything's bad. Um okay, so we added X in there. Oh, I need Tokyo too. Um, let's see. I don't know if I need anything else. Oh, we need request. Need request. I don't even know if I need survey and JSON because I don't care about those. I just need request. Uh, is there something in request for headers? I don't see it. Pika, hello. I, I I like it. Now I'm Mr. Zilage Axum LMS guy. I mean eventually if if you keep on like extracting the stack out, like my my name can end up being like an entire paragraph. It's like those fantasy names where people like also put in like what they've done as part of their names. All right, let's um let's set up a test. Oh, we need to use this as Tokyo test. All right, so what are what are the what are the parts for this? Uh, I want I'm probably gonna do four tests for the four different things. So the first is gonna be we want to set Wait. Twitch is going through agony right now. You cannot see or hear anything. Oh no. I'm sorry about that. Uh I'm not dropping any frames. My mic hasn't decided to go absolutely insane yet. Stream is fine. Okay. So sorry about that, Pika. All right, what do I want to name this? This is going to be let's do let's do the standard headers first, right? But this can if we're setting these, this can be Ooh, we could just do this as a mirror headers.
Oh, but if you're mirroring the headers, that gets that gets weird because you don't know what what headers to do. So Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll skip. Maybe we'll do mirror. So maybe we'll do like a set header. So like um uh server sets headers oh i also want I'm looking at this thing down here. Like as soon as that goes away, I'm I'm ready to go and program again. Until then, Rust Analyzer is still rebooting. And I have to reboot it in order to have it see the new package that I added in. Maybe maybe you're actually good now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we'll set our URL. I want to do a standard request. So we'll just do get a response. Um, this can be a get request, right? So I could just use a get off of you. Okay, so that could give us you I want this to be a 200 just in, okay, so we can do, uh, let's just do an assert. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with this. No server is there to connect to kind of kind of makes sense. All right. Um oh, I want I can't remember if I if I shared with, with this with you uh but stacking I created a um an LT2 uh alias which just does exa uh tree icons limit two so i i'm only getting like two levels in which is it works out really nicely i don't have to worry about like going into target too much or anything else and for the most part i only need two levels um okay so i want Go into source. We have our main. Okay, so we want to touch live address. I want to take a router. 
Oh, somebody made a tree that works with Exa and is way better? Ooh, we can take a look at that, yeah. Uh, I want mod.rs and then I want what do I want here? Uh, I guess like set headers is what we're going to call these. For receiving headers, these might need to be I guess I guess in a way I'll mirror them back. I'll have I'll have them mirror the values back out with something else. That's the only thing I can think about it. Oh, unless no, it can just return a JSON of what those were. That makes sense. Okay, so we'll do set headers like that. I didn't add anything in, so we're good to go. So let's head into Okay, I don't need to do anything there. I need to go to our mod. Um, startup builder, hello. Uh, still not completed the system. So actually, I have I have built enough of an MVP for the LMS to I I think at least try to run a pre-release essentially course. Uh, so now we're working on the actual course. So it's going to be a new a new Axum course. So I'm creating assessments for it because that's going to be the new the big change in in this course from the last time that I did it. Uh, it's going to be hosted in my LMS. So we're going to have, um, or I, I guess it's going to be hosted in several different places. So the assessments are hosted in GitHub. Uh, videos are hosted in YouTube. And then the articles themselves are just in my own database. And then uh, it's uh, the, the main course is going to be a live course. Uh, which is not going to be here on Twitch, but it's going to be a paid course and that gives you access to Discord. So we're going to we're going to basically have a Discord private server channel uh, who those who pay comes in and then you're sort of like get to be part of that. And I'll do videos and everything there, so it won't be streamed. Yeah, that's the that's the idea. And then we're going to we're going to sort of see how that goes. It'll be a pretty heavy discount for the pre-release version because all the features aren't there and I want to make sure that it's going to go. I haven't decided yet. Uh I've been talking with my mentors, been doing some uh who wants to do like a very similar thing too. Can you pay by credit card? Yes. Um I'm actually set up Stripe already. So you can when when I make it so that you can pay, you can use Stripe. And a credit card is absolutely uh, accepted there. I think that Stripe actually would allow me to accept lots of other things too, but I haven't really looked into it. Okay, thanks, Stacking. Yeah, the, if you find a new thing for Exa, so far it's been great. And if uh, if there's a better tree, I would love to take a look at that. Uh, for those of you who are who are wondering what we're talking about, uh, Exa is a replacement for LS. So uh, if you noticed when I do LL, it looks 
exactly like LS, except I get these little icons here. Uh, so if I um, if I do EXA on its own, it's just like LL. It's just like LS. So EXA um, LS dash AL dash LA. Uh, I have to get those. I have to do dash dash icons. Uh, then I can do a tree. So I can do dash dash tree. And that shows me a tree view of everything. It's really nice. I like it a lot. Uh, I installed Exa through Homebrew on a Mac, uh, but I believe it's everything else. And LA, yes, it does mean list all. So L is list in um, list in just a column form, and uh, A is all including hidden files. So uh, this um, any file that starts with a dot essentially is a hidden file. And so I created aliases, so I can do LL, LA, um, and LT uh, for the various different views that I want. And then I added an LT2, which is a uh, just two levels deep for the, the tree view, because otherwise it becomes really hard to look at if, if there's like hundreds of files deep. Uh, Trulio, hello. Quick question. Can a project already written in Actix can benefit from using Axum? Maybe. The answer is maybe. So... If if you have something like Axum sitting here, so Ax Actix, uh, come on, Actix Web. So let's say you have Actix Web sitting here, and uh, you have some like front end stuff. It's like you have um, a web client, maybe have like. You want to represent like multiple of these. They're all hitting here. Generally speaking, you don't like replace any functionality inside of this Actix web with Axum to, to help out. But what you might be able to do is put Axum over here. And then what would happen is you'd say, Okay, web client is going to hit Actix web. Actix web maybe wants to do something that's like pretty heavy or it wants to like uh do do something that like you don't want to program into Actix web. So Actix web can actually then take that request and forward it on to maybe a new Axum server. It does the thing and then returns back to Actix web which then returns back to the web client. So that's that that's a, a pretty common pattern. And then what you let's do here. Database. You could have a database with each system. So now you have uh maybe like one database there and another database here. And so this is this is like getting into like microservice architectures and uh, basically if you don't want to add a feature into here, it's okay, you add the feature somewhere over here. The technology that runs it doesn't really matter because it's a separate deployment, it's a separate everything. Uh, if you need to scale this up separately, you can. If you need to scale this up separately and not Axum, you can. Um, you, I would 
probably stick with this and not go into like the full microservice architecture as as it's defined by all the blogs and and books and everything else. Does that does that answer your question, Trulio? You know, like replacing Actix. Oh, replacing Actix with Axum. The handler logic is pretty separate from the framework itself. I have not looked into that at all. If you want to do a replacement for it, I would I would imagine that doing something so like the same pattern can kind of sort of also be used here. Um, what you could do is you could say, okay, web client hits Actix Web. You take the logic out of one of the the controllers, the router, and you put that into Axum, and then you forward the, the traffic along. And then it just sort of does this thing, right? So in this case, it wouldn't have a separate database. It would be the same database. And then over time, everything's been moved over, and then you can just switch you to now hitting that directly and this goes away and um that pattern this pattern is called the stringler pattern where you're you're stringling out the original technology with the new technology by replacing little pieces of it uh here and there so that's that's like if i needed to replace one server with another server that's probably how I would do it. Um, Dame Jiguara? Hello. There's a streamer you used to follow who would use Vim. Uh, I guess multiple Vim windows and rest for the development. Um, oh, Giz Gizmo. That sounds familiar. Maybe, maybe someone else remembers better but i don't remember there's a lot of vim or vim like rust developers so there's a lot of rust developers who use vim or vim like systems and twitch so um you might be able to see any of those like i guess it depends are you looking for that specific developer or are you looking for other people that use vim type things uh, Startup Builder, this this is called Freeform. It's a brand new application that's available on Macs and is made by Apple. And so it's just, if you have a Mac and you've already paid that price, it's available for you for free. And you can just have it on your desktop. And and talking about like the the end things is if you have a testing framework, let's do another cert. Let's do what's what's another good shape for tests? I don't need clothing. I sure we'll do a giant circle. Uh, so if we have like um, our integration tests. And by integration tests, because it's a web server, I'm thinking it's something like Cypress or Playwright. This is now going to hit the Axum server. And it's gonna it's gonna act exactly the same. So if you have all of these set up, you can be confident uh for when you shut off or when you switch over services from Actix Web to Axum, that actually everything is going to work the way you want it to. I wouldn't even dare dream about doing any kind of like major refactor or changing servers until I had a full test suite. And so if you don't have the appetite for that, then as like everybody else is saying, just probably just let it let it go. 
But yeah, it's all everything. Everything is relative. If if you really just hate writing new code in there, just do what. Just do this thing where you just have a something else, and add on. You're still on the boat that is not refactoring without a test. Um, so I really like the definition of uh, the refactoring is you're not changing behavior. Rewriting is behavior is is changing. Behavior can change. It might, well, I guess like, yeah, rewrite has behavior change. Uh, refactor behavior doesn't change. You can't know if you're refactoring or rewriting without a test. Because how can you be 100% confident that the behavior didn't change? The only way is with the test. And probably multiple tests. So you can't just have one test. You have to have tests across the entire everything. Um, what did I set this route to? Set headers, OK. So I want to use. Oh, of course it doesn't have axum get. So something something that is not that fun with Helix here. I'm looking through all these auto autocompletes. None of them is what I want. As far as I know, there's no way for me to like cancel this and have it get rid of what it's already inserted in. Because if I press escape. It's just there still, so I now have to go back and delete it. Kind of sucks. Oh, it's uh, it's not that. Is it routing get? That's what it is. All right. Oh, you know what? I need tracing stuff too. I need both tracing and tracing driver. Oh, and then uh See, tracing, tracing subscriber, and then uh, what was it? It was like tower HTTP. Yeah, with that. So. Okay, so um, let's see if I can remember, let's see if I can do this from memory. I've done it like four times in the last week. We want to do tracing, subscriber, format, run. Oh, in it, in it. So tracing subscriber format in it. Now I can do debug stuff. So I can do tracing debug at this point in time. I want to grab the router. I want to get the address. 
which was ooh, it's not maybe uh, it's not it's standard net, but it's not socket address. I think it's something like that. Uh oh. I for I this is the part I now forgot. Oh, you can go here. Oh, and that's okay. They have two different instructions and guides for setting this up based upon if you're in this page or if you're on the crates page. Was this failing before? I also feel that the CI failing is I don't know, like a lot of people put these in here, but I don't know if this is useful for us as the end user, because I don't think this is CI failing for this version. This is CI failing for whatever version they're throwing up. So it's not for like that. I wish that this would show only that one, but I think this is for everything. Socket adder, that's what it is. Uh, socket adder, oh, and it's from, right? So from, and I want a tuple with an array. A port. Uh, we'll do a tracing debug. X and main branch is 0 0.7. It has breaking changes, maybe because of that. I would I would guess so. The problem is, and, and this is not just Axum, this is like almost every open source project. It makes it so that the 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 CI little badge there is just noise that we have to ignore. Because it failing the test doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Everything actually is still working. It just means that the new tests that are like in the main branch aren't working. That doesn't mean anything. At least it doesn't mean anything to me as someone who's using the deployed version. Okay, so I want Axum. Is it server? I don't think it's server, right? What is server bind? Okay, so bind, and then we give it the address. You failed because a nightly test failed after a PR was merged to fix a typo. Oh, it failed, sorry. Um, I didn't see the T for some reason. It failed because a nightly test failed after a PR was merged to fix a typo. That's kind of hilarious that a typo fix caused it to fail. It's kind of funny. Uh, Pika, welcome back. What was the issue? Okay, so I think I think you're going well. 
I don't actually think I need even a result on this, do I? Like everything's just going to crash or it's going to be fine. <laughs> so it just, it just is that. Because I'm not question marking anything here. Oh, um, hmm. Hold on. How do I do the router again? Oh, right, right. Bind and then serve. Yeah, that's what it is. So bind, serve, router, and to make service. And then we'll do that. Windows update. The. I, I feel that every time that it's not necessarily a Windows update for me, it's the graphic driver graphics drivers update. I feel like every time that there's a graphics drivers update, very shortly afterwards, my computer just starts going on the fritz unless I unless I fix that. Unless I like update to the, the latest version, which is not what I remember things used to being like. I, I remember in the past, it's like, oh, the that specific game is having a little bit of trouble. Just try gra graphics update. Now it's like, hey, your monitors are constantly flashing on and off and aren't working very well. Well, I guess they released a new up graphics driver update. Now nothing works. Okay, so I have you running. Everything's happy. I don't need you. Uh, we need to head into main. Okay, so we have our server running. Uh, let's head back to router and we'll set a layer for, what was it? It was tower HTTP. Something, okay, so it's trace. Oh, was it trace layer? It's trace, trace layer. New for HTTP, that's what it is. Okay, so there's that. Uh, don't know where that came from. Now, if we run you, oh, um, then server running on port three thousand. Finish running. Okay, that's not. What did I do wrong? That shouldn't. That shouldn't fail. <laughs> Uh, so I have socket address, I have my router, tracing debug, app and server bind, serve, await, oh, this is what it is, Axum server, this can, this can error. Oh, we have to await you. And I bet you're going to yell at me for not using a result. Okay, so let's do this.
You tried working with Twitch API earlier, trying to figure out WebSockets. They're, um, I've used them before. It, it seems to be like, it's fine. What, what I think I dislike the most about the Twitch API is that there's, there's two separate APIs for events and then another one for chat messages. So if you ever want to like say, Hey, this event happened like a follow or something like that, it's, it's very confusing because you have to have like these two systems running separately. It almost makes it so you have to use some kind of API, like a, um, a wrapper API that combines them together. I think TMI for Node.js, I think that library is does them both. I think that does both. Uh, but it's been a while since I've looked at it. Uh, okay, so apparently, um, server, okay, so a server exited with error. Can I do that? I don't remember if I can display error like that or not. Or rather, every time I forget if I can do that or not. Wait, TMI is very deprecated? Well, it shows how long it's been since I've used TMI. Or anything Node.js to to connect to uh, uh, Twitch. All right, so our tests are passing, excellent, and we see here we go. So we saw we got went to set headers, excellent. I want to go to our tests, and then we got a two hundred success. Okay. I thought Alka was, is Alka not working on TMI anymore? Alka might be, they, they it might have been, maybe there's like a new version. Um, let's see. So we have your response. Uh, we have this one. Okay, so then I want to grab the headers coming back out and see what they are. And I guess just like see that it's set to something. Um, I could, I could pass in something and then it's like your job is to set that back out. That could work. Oh, V2 is still in the works, you think? Okay. So it's it's going. It's like it's like all the libraries. But anyways, Rust. Yes. Indeed. Um, let's see. Okay, so set headers. How do I want to do this? Do I want do I want it to be the same the same every time? Do I want fuzz testing? Uh where I like set some random number or something like that, and then I send that along and then expect to get that back. That might be best that it, it might be good to do like a random, a random response out. Cause if I were to say, okay, get this, get like a specific header out. So let's do, what are my trying? What are my chance? Uh, let's do, let's do a standard header. Response. I can do headers. Oh, that gives me a headers map. Okay, so this gives me all the headers. Then I want to grab out a specific header. So what are what are the standard headers? There's like, what are standard headers that we set or that we can set that are not like default by the browser? There's authentication. Let's 
So I can get... Very odd. Oh, what am I doing here? Ha, ah, okay. I need to go look at MDN uh, content type. Content type, that's that's it. Let's do get that. So we'll do content type. Come on. Equals, okay, so I think it's, is it content type like that? Content type. Uh, I want this to, if you fail to get it, that's going to be a problem, right? So we will, this be a sum. Else we will return an error. Actually, we could bail from here. Uh, content type header not set to JSON. Ooh. Oh, come on. Is it JSON application? Yeah. Oh, is it content dash type? You're probably right. Okay, so give me that. Oh, here. Whoa, nope. Stop. Go back. Content header not set is all this is about. This is not checking to see that it's set to that yet. Okay, so we do that. Uh, and then I ex assert equal. You're a header value. Um, I don't know what this gives me. Oh, I can do to start. Okay. And I want this to be JSON application. Is that what it normally is? MDN um, headers content. I could make this random. Application JSON. Okay, I was I was I was thinking like JSON application felt wrong, but like it's also felt right, and so I was getting I was getting really confused. Application JSON that feels more right. Okay, so let's save you. Why are you upset? Mismatch types expected an enum. Oh, result. Hold on to stir returns a result it does okay error content type header not set perfect so let's go and take a look at that in set headers um all right so now I need to remember how to now I need to remember how to set the headers.
These are extracting headers. Extractor and response that works with typed header values from headers. Wait, so I can do that with just the response? Oh yeah, absolutely. Typed header, content type, static stir, for example. You thought you would dig into that failure more, and it seems that Axum is using the try build crate to ensure that certain tests fail. It compares errors to a saved error message, and Nightly may have changed the output so it doesn't match. Oh, interesting. An interesting choice. The there's there's good and bad things about that. The the good thing is it should be fairly simple for them to understand what's going on and fix it. The bad thing is like every time that they they have to make that choice, they also have to do a change there. And so there's a there's a dependency there that can be a little bit confusing to an outsider. If you return JSON, doesn't Axum does the setup by itself? I want to say yes, it does. Yeah, I think it does. We can choose one of the other standard headers too. The content type is a pretty pretty common one for setting. Now, what if I what if I do this? <laughs> and I basically say Hey, we're setting this as a header and a and just a string. This was not JSON. Okay, I like I kind of like that. It's like so silly, but like it it works. So we're gonna we're gonna return here. Let's do a typed header. And then type is going to be the header itself. So typed header. Oh, yeah. So then just going to be content type, which is from headers like that. So typed header content type. And I want to do. Content type. JSON, I think. Oh, and this will be a typed header like that. Yeah. OK, so that makes it pass. And let's say also to force you to not return JSON, but to set the JSON. So this is like the work. This is not a good practice for a server, but it is a good practice to make sure that you can set the content type manually, to set a header manually. But I, I'm trying to set like the, the standard ones. We're going to do a custom header next. Uh, OK, so assert equal that. And then I also want the body so i want um assert equal this is going to be the response text to be um just like hello world text response oh it's a feature Yeah, okay, so I'm not responding to anything right now.
Ooh, how do I how do I match surround? I want to No, select around so word word. No, that doesn't that didn't do it. I've I've yet to figure out how to like properly surround like take a full select that goes to the beginning of the line and then do it only to like whatever text is there. Uh, so let's do match surround with that tuple. And then you'll become hello world that. Okay, and you're you're t you're passing with tests again. The only time you did that was because you needed to return a zip. Yeah, but you needed to do it, so you needed to know how to do it, right? I guess like in this case, it is it is a little bit contrived for for this, but it is um I am returning the incorrect content type in order to show that you can do that. Or at least in order to like test like, hey, can you set it manually? Do you know how to set this manually? Um, that wasn't right. I wanted to go to the readme. So this first task is now set the content Wait, match? Hold on. What? Nope. Nope. Stop. Oh, I surrounded by M. Oops. Okay, I want to do match surround with that. Okay, almost almost got it correct. Um Set the content type header to be uh, application JSON, but but keep returning the hello world uh, string. Okay, so that's that's the first one. The second one, um, I want to set I want to set a custom header Now we have this header, so let's do another one down here. So we'll do let some this will be custom header equals headers dot get. Okay, so what should a custom header be? Back in the old days, custom headers had to be, had to start with X dash. And so it was like X dash, and that's why you see X dash everywhere all the time still. It's because that's just how it was. But it's no longer, as long as it's not something else. Um, oh, we can do like token. Bear token? Yeah, we can do we can do like a little bear like fake bear token thing. So we can do uh token is that else fail. Um token custom header set okay so what are you upset about oh cannot move out of response because it's borrowed move out of response occurs here with the headers oh yeah okay so i want 
maybe to but no. Put you put you here. There it goes. Okay. So the custom header is not set. I want the bearer token and then we can we can set the bearer token to just be, you know, bearer and some random random string that doesn't really matter. Uh, I want response text to be that. Let's do insert equal. So our custom header to stir uh, is going to be bear We'll just we'll just do something silly like that. It it doesn't need to be like a real bearer token. Um so now you should fail because custom header not set. So now I want to set the custom header, which is gonna be token okay oh interesting this is type header um i need this needs to be a different a different route doesn't it because it's not a type header anymore uh can i do headers content type can i do something else it's like let um You're not gonna okay here except for I might want to do this as two different tests. Okay, let's do this as two different tests. So you sit here like this. We'll come back to here. So this is now server sets. Um, standard headers. Like, um, you know, just server sets header. So URL response, assert equal to that, headers that I don't get that one. I don't get that one. And everything is fine, right? I grab you, paste you in, paste then server sets, custom header. Uh, we'll go, so instead of set, Headers will be set um, custom headers. Oh, we should change this to set header. Set custom header. So oh, nope, stop. Oh, well. Okay, response. We expect to get a two hundred. Uh, we get the hair map out of here, so this is going to be the token header. I want you to be, we'll just get token. Why do I have that, like, little tilde in there? That seems weird. So... Um, custom header, uh, 
uh, token not set. So content type header not set. Okay, don't do that. Um, token header. Okay, so you're gonna be token header to string should be bare. Don't do that. Um, and then also we should still have, we don't need to have this string anymore. We don't really care about that. Just, just this. Um, I wonder if I want to do something where it's like, hey, uh, return both custom and 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 the other one at the same time and that would that would definitely do transfer that would definitely test for transfer so um let's see i don't i don't know how much i want to do that though uh all right so this is set custom header Yes, I know. You're upset. So then I want that to be there. What? Oh. Headers. Okay, like that. Uh, let's head into set headers, and you become a header like that our orthogonal complement hello is this meant to be a course for those who don't know rest or a course for those who know rest but not axim i would say it's a course for it's it's going to be more for people who know rust but not axim or web development or or server side web development like one of one of those two I think that you can get away with minimal rest and then I'll, I'll help teach some of like some of that as sort of like we'll, we'll come along with it, but it's not going to teach rest from scratch. I want to, I want to make sure that the LMS is like really in a good place before I take on that. Cause that, that course, like an actual, like, learn rust course is going to be a little bit more involved and i've already talked to my uh, my mentor he's on board with a introduction to like programming like teach programming course and then we can do we can do rust stuff in there inside of there so someday someday i will i will do a learn how to program and then rust. And it'll be great. Okay, so let's do, there's that. But we can also do our, our um, comment here. So uh, this is gonna be set the update this, uh, this route handler so that it returns a um, turns a content type header of application 
JSON uh, with the static stir of hello world. Okay, how much um how much rest do you know orthogonal? Just uh just out of curiosity, it will it will help me sort of like understand what more I need to add in rest wise development. A big part of it though is because I'm planning on doing this as like a sort of like a live course where uh, there's plenty of like touch points where we can like have meetings over Discord and sort of chat with things. It's gonna make it a lot easier to teach the rust part of it with there because you know somebody who doesn't know that won't need to show up to those lessons for example and i won't i may not even need those lessons in the lms itself it just may be like answering questions or you know helping out here and there like the equivalent of being in in the class working on an assignment and then the the instructor just sort of stops by and says like, oh no this is the thing and then sort of like helps you out and you go on it didn't require like a full lesson but you still got the help. Um, oh, ooh, ooh, wait a second. I'm in the wrong, ooh, hold on. I want to buffer close. That one, put you in there. Okay, now now we're happy again. A silver name exists in the module set headers. Um, yeah, I know, but I don't want that. No set header in a router set header. Oh yes, what's this? I should have done the rename function method of um, of Helix. I've done it before. I don't know why I didn't think of doing it this time. It would have been much better. All right, let's run this again. Okay, so you you failed. You are getting to set custom header now, and it failed because custom header token was not set. Great. So. Here's set custom header. Oh, I don't have that yet. Hold on, we have to do this. Whoa, why am I on two? Don't do that. Bad helix. Uh, set custom header, set custom header. Whoa, no, don't paste there. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? Not a lot, honestly. You've been taking a brief preliminary look at starting to learn a language. You don't have background in low-level memory management languages. You're mainly interested in Rust because of the type system and the um, functional programming constructs which you do at work. Interesting, okay. I would say that if you read through the first couple chapters of the book, uh, do some of the examples like get Rust installed, um, Play around with it a little bit. I think that if you get just like a few rest, few of those chapters in, I think that would be enough. And then you already have backend web development set up. The the like the things about like teaching of like oh how a router works or like what that even is like you'll you'll know what that is instantaneously, and it will be pretty pretty easy for you to get going. 
And I expect that's going to happen a lot. I expect we're going to have like some people that need more help with Rust and some people who need more help with understanding how web dev works. And that's fine. Okay, so we have you. You're still going. So now you need to set the custom header. Um, the custom header. So uh, the pre -do -do, I need. All right, how do we do this? So we have typed header, but this is not a typed header anymore. This is now going to be. headers it's so not resp response parts header get a reference to their response headers oh get a mutable reference to their response headers so here okay that's great this isn't a response the the fact that Axum does things as like getters and setters is a little bit weird. And by getters and setters, I mean like in the request, it's a response type and it's also a extractor. It feels a little bit weird, but it's like not violating any of the rustiness too. It's like it's it's weird all around and yet not weird at the same time. Do I just grab it as an extractor? I think I do. Let's find out. That's why we have tests, right? Uh, so this is header map. Um, oh, with a T for header value. Which I think so I think in here we can say I want headers is going to be a header map. Like that. Uh, and then we say, OK, I want um, let some. Ooh, no, I don't need to do anything. It's like something like that. We're just going to say, okay, headers. We're going to insert into here. Uh, the key is going to be that token. The value, I wonder if I can do this as a static stir. Let's do this wrong. Let's just do multiple one, two. We'll just do one, two, three, four. So if I don't do anything else, if that's okay, we don't. Expected header value found stir. Okay, so you need to be header value. Header value from the static. Okay. Cannot borrow headers mutable. It's not declared as mutable. Okay, fine. Uh, mute headers. Okay, you're you're happy there. And if we rerun you, custom header token not set. So that didn't actually do the thing. Appends a header to this response builder. So I can do a response builder for headers.
So that's just creating a full response and then returning that. Wait, is this in middleware? No. Okay, so I can just create a new response and then just return that. I think that might be the best way to do this. So, uh, we're not going to take anything in at all. We're going to do let mute response equals. I think it's going to be response. Builder. Append a header. So header uh, keys is going to be token. And then if I do this, value can be whatever I want. So bearer. Do that one so it's wrong. Uh, is there like a build or is it just body? Consumes this builder uh, using the provided body to return a constructed response. And so you're upset, expected one argument. Wait. wait. Using the provided body to return a constructed response. Oh. Interesting. Um, and then I want to turn the response, but you're going to be upset. Uh, so now I can maybe said I want you to be a response. Your result with a response. Okay, uh, we can we can deal with that. So I want this to be a normal result uh, with a response and a static stir. It's like status code. It doesn't really matter. Not a request status code. Axum status code. Okay. Uh, now you need to be an okay. Still not happy. Mismatch types, expected destruct, Axum response. Found a result. Oh, oh, result. Um, Oh, but it, it probably can't do a question mark here because that's not going to return a status code, isn't it? So I need to, okay, hold, we'll map the error. Uh, we can do a tracing. Oh, let's do multi line this. We'll do a tracing debug. Um, error setting custom header. And then I want to, I want to return a status code of internal server error. Do that. Okay. Now what? 
Mismatch types expect to destruct accent response. Wait, so I have to give it the type? Maybe. And then you're unhappy because I could just return this directly. Oh, it doesn't need to be mutable. Not using those. All right, let's see about the, oh, it doesn't like that at all. Um, set custom error, the trait handler is not implemented for function impl future. Result response. Okay, so this response is not happy, doesn't know what to do with that. Okay, hold on. Fine, I will go and look at examples on GitHub. I I always feel slightly bothered whenever I feel I have to go to the GitHub repository and look at examples for how to do stuff. Um, that is not where I want to be. This is not Axum. Like, I feel that the documentation should just have the information that I want. That's the only examples that have headers. Okay, fine. Fine, we'll go back and look at the documentation until we figure it out. They apparently don't have an example for that, so we have to continue looking. Um, all right, so... So, Randling, Handlers, Extractors, Responses. I would imagine they would be in Responses. I don't see anything else in here. Is that the same thing? That's not the same thing. That examples is where I went to look at examples. Hey, Zilby. Hi. Want to come and say hi? Come here. No? Want to just hang out under the desk? Um, okay. Enables extracting typed headers. Okay, well, extracting is required anyways. We're going to get to that in the next test.
Okay, responses. Oh, this is literally that's okay. This is not helpful. Response. Building responses, anything it does into response. Okay, so async function headers, I can return a header map. I can create a new header. Oh, okay, this is what I need to do right here. So header map. So set custom headers, so I don't need to do any of this nonsense. Uh, we are going to do a header map. I thought I tried this, but oh, I tried to do it as an extractor to get headers that were coming in and update them, but I think that was very much wrong. So I'm going to do a let mute, like um, this is going to be the outgoing headers. So. new i'm going to set this outgoing headers i'm going to insert token and you need to be a header value well that's interesting so it's like word parse unwrap that's that's interesting um, okay, so this is going to be bear. Let's do that. Now, if I don't do anything else, you're going to be up. Oh, I need to return the outgoing headers. Okay, you're upset. Uh, mismatch types expected header value found stir. Okay, so to owned as field. I don't think that's what I want. They were using parse. Parse the string size into the type. Okay, so we could parse. I wonder if I... then that's a result. So then that would be an unwrap. Okay. That should work. Yes, it did. Okay, so now we have left doesn't equal right. So one, two, three, four. All right, now now the tests are passing. So this is gonna be um Didn't yank it. Okay, so if we do that, now I'm really curious about this parse. So can I do an into? Like the instructions had that, but can I just do an into on this? No, it doesn't know. Okay, so it doesn't know what that is. Um, it's a T, so the value is a T, there's no, oh, there's no where T, so it's anything? Okay, hold on. I 
Okay, give me a header map. Here's those person unwraps. Insert. Insert a key value pair into the map. If the map did not previously, okay. If the map did not, um, yeah. That doesn't really tell me what this needs to be, does it? T equals header value. I, I wish they sort of like showed that. Okay, so. I, oh, here it is. That's up here. Header value. Let's go take a look at that. From static. Converts a static string to a header value. Which returns... Why am I not using that? Okay. I'll do... Header value from static That's so much of a better idea than unwrap than parse and unwrap And it still works. I like this a lot. This is so much better. Okay. So if it's um from static and then there's some other things there too, so like there's from stir uh from name from bytes okay yeah there's so this is so much better i like i like this a lot more thank you asitu yeah that's that's helpful okay so i set this there we go out um Okay, so we're we're good to go there. Um, let's head back into our assessment. So we have, uh, we set the header, we set the custom header, and then I want I want one more of these together. So I want to set uh. Server sets custom header and um, sets custom and typed header, maybe? It's custom and typed header. Okay, so I get that um, response. Okay, so it should be a 200. I get the headers. Um, and then I, I, I'm okay with like doing both the, the, these exact same things together. So we'll get the token header. I'll also grab out The content type. So for this, for set headers, update this route and returns um, directly return a typed header. Do I want to like actually I don't know if I want to specifically say that or not. I'm not I'm not convinced one way or another. Uh because I don't want to like give it away too much. 
And if somebody were to just use the header map directly for all of them, I don't know if I'd actually care that much. Because, like, I just want you not to freeze if you, like, run into different things. I think it'll be fine. Okay, so we have content type. We have the token header. Um, we assert equal that that's equal to that. So I can do assert equal for the content type too. Content type equals that. And then also let's, let's get that hello world going. Okay, server sets custom and typed header. We got a 404, not surprising. Uh, so this is gonna be set custom and typed header. So touch set custom and typed header. Okay, so you should be happy. Now we should get custom typed header not set. So we got past the 200. And we're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be that insert. So. So I want to return a header map. So your content type header is not set. Okay, so let mute headers. Now I wanna insert. Now is there a way to insert a typed header for this? Now, this is basically just a map. It's like very, very, very simple. Okay, um, let's do that's that's too bad. I was really hoping that it could be like a cont uh I wouldn't have to do content type like this. And instead, I would do header value Didn't repose used to have a header value on it that you can insert? 
It might. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, in this one, I have, I have this typed header that I could insert here, response. So I have response like that. Response body we ran into a little bit of trouble with. Um, oh, set header map X. Let's take a look at that. So if I... Headers, ooh, set header. We just, I just saw that somewhere. Where did I see that? Okay, so not in there. Okay, so where did I see X? Their map X. An extractor, maybe, yeah. But I don't want to extract it this time. I want to set it for the response. It was in a headers crate. Okay, so it's in, it's in header. Go to typed header and click the link to header script. Okay, so go to typed header. Finding things in, in the Axum uh Wait, why am I in an HTTP? How did it get there? No wonder I'm not finding anything. Okay. Uh, typed header. For the extractor. And click the link to headers. They have a few different ways, but you're doing it right, so maybe they change the API. The That's one of the things about Axum that is a little bit upsetting is there's no, there's, there's several different ways to do something. There's a bunch of examples, but not all the examples cover everything. Okay, there's an extension trait in here, so we're gonna go take a look at the traits. Ah, an extension trait adding typed methods the header map. Here we go. So this is not extractor. This is extension. Okay. Whose idea was it that we should need to stay with three letters for for all this stuff? Like we one of my one of my instructors in school was like complaining, ranting about this, and it's like ever like we we had we ran into so many memory problems as developers in the olden days that we just decided to stay with it forever. Typed insert. Okay, so I can do a typed insert. Ah, that pulls it in. Okay, so then header. Uh, so I want... Content type. Um, 
Wait, wait. Content type header. How do I? Let's just open up a new page. Content type header. How do I set what you are? Yeah, example values, got that. Oh, okay, JSON. The constructor easily create, okay, that's what it was. That's it. Okay, so that's what I want to do. And we're going to return headers. There we go. Thank you, Isitsu. That That is exactly what we were looking for. Uh, this typed insert, which is not a normal insert on there. It's a trait insert, but because of that, it's not in the same documentation page because of reasons. Um, is this is the discovery building thing I every once in a while go off on a rant about with Rust is like, there's so many ways to do stuff. It's so great, but then to discover that you can do something sometimes requires that somebody else knows it and tells you which is not great. Here's why you prefer Actix Web, Axum plus HTTP plus headers plus tower. Actix Web does give you all the things. That is, that is true. The other way is to give, uh, to pass a tuple in the response. At least it's not where they have the super idiom one letter variables. Oh, yeah. That's a hill you'll die on. The stupid thing Google tried to push is a performance boost. I never understood because it's not like, what kind of performance are you getting at? Like you're, you're getting, well, for, uh, for multiple reasons. First of all, the web learned this a long time ago. Write your code in full English and like make it actually, well, for, for whatever language you're, you're reading, um, write your code in like full language and then run a compiler to turn it into single variables if you really need to. That's what you do is like, if, if you really need to just run everything through a compiler to compile it into some other language that then can be compiled again. So if you really want everything to be single letters, you can at runtime. Let's, let's go the Java route. Everything, we're abandoning everything. All languages, we're going away. We're going back to Java. And we're going to go back to Java applets for web. It'll be great, I'm sure. All right, headers. Um, so we do typed inserts. Uh, okay, so we did typed insert. Now we want to just do a normal insert. Uh, and this is going to be that token. Bear. Oh wait, not not just token. This is gonna be a better value from static. Oh, and we're still not returning the hello world. I'm on the left side, aren't I? So I want to be over here. And now I can do hello world. Boom, everything works. Factory builder, response builder, service factory builder. 
that's just the type, right? So then you do the exact same thing, but with the first letter of that lowercase. So factory builder, response builder, service fact builder, factory builder, response builder, service factory builder. And then you have to pass in, you know, we want to do some dependency injection too, right? So we have to pass in factory builder, response builder, and service factory as well. Don't forget. On one end, you have short names. On the other end, you have long names. Well, it's true. We can't do something in between, can we? Like, there's there's no way for us to have, like, names that are, that are between one character and, like, a billion characters. We have to go full out or nothing at all. It's a, it's a rule. With SSR on the rage and .NET is back and open source, it's like early 2000s again. It's also the same thing with um, Signals is like is bringing things back again with with that. It's it's very interesting how like things flow way back. Um, you know something that just hurt my soul. Um, my mentor told me that apparently. Um, the uh the uh the new kids on the 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 programming block have have decided that um agile is is a terrible idea and waterfall is the way to go and so we're bringing that back i'm okay with hating on agile like agile Agile by like implementing somebody else's agile thing is not agile. <laughs> At least blindly implementing that. But then going all the way back and saying, you know what? Waterfall is a great idea. It works so well. Um, that's like it worked it worked so well that they had to change its name to Six Sigma. So that way you, when you're hiring you can say we do we do six sigma and everybody was like oh okay that clearly is different than than waterfall so i trust you i don't know i can i can go off and like yell at that tangentially for a long time okay where am i going i'm in the wrong window i'm over here uh so let's see let's do this as um Update this route handler to um, uh, respond with uh, content type application JSON and token bear. Um, uh, headers together with the static string uh, hello world. Okay. You're still passing tests. Everything's happy. Clippy's happy too, so that's, that's great. Um, let's Write all. Yeah, okay, so nothing changed when I did write all. So let's do get status. All right, that's lock, Tomal, readme. Oh, check that out. I don't want that. So let's. Okay, we have source and test. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we'll do initial commit here. What? Do I have origin? Oh, I haven't created this as a repo yet. GitHub repo create. That's why. So 
this is XM assessment for setting and retrieving headers. There we go. Okay, happy, happy there. All right, so that's pushed up. We're good to go there. I heard a lot of stuff coming in on Discord, but nothing happened in, in our channel. So I think that was actually one of my other servers that I'm following. All right, let's um, let's go ahead and uh, let's call it for the day. So today is Thursday. Tomorrow, um, uh, we will finish up this uh, this assessment. We're I think halfway through it, maybe a little bit more. We um, I think with that we've got the setting of the headers, and the last thing is going to be the uh, receiving of the headers. So I'm thinking um, we'll just like send two headers in. You need to grab them out and then like resend them back in a JSON. And that should that should be fine for that. B Porter, uh, hello. Um absolutely. And then let's see. I don't think there's anything else to go with that. So, anyways, um, I'll be back tomorrow morning around 6 a.m. mountain time. We'll stream about until this time. So like 8:45 or so. It's about two and a two and a half hours or so. Well, thank you so much for lurking. Everybody else who's also lurking, thank you so much uh, as well. Um, having having all of you chat, but also having lurkers, it's all great. Thank you all. Uh, hello, coffee drinker, and hello and bye. And uh, I guess I will see you next time. Bye.